Hello, my name's Simon Pilbeam and I'm going to take you through another in our introductory series of videos. This video is going to be about Synergy Capture. Synergy Capture is our software that allows you to bring your media into either our Synergy Archive or standalone storage, if that's what you wish to do. So what does it actually look like and how does it work? Let's have a look. So if we turn to our computer screen, you'll see that on there I have two icons which are relevant to Synergy Capture version 11. The first one is my configurator for the Capture Engine itself. Now this Capture Engine doesn't have to be on the same machine, even though in this case we are running it as a local host. It can be run remotely on a remote server. And the Capture Client, the Capture Control, can also therefore sit either on the same machine or completely independently remotely to the server itself as a separate client and you can have multiple control points for that. We'll look at the control in a moment. Let's look at the configuration first. So if I double click my configurator up here, you'll see that I open up my capture manager board. If I make that full screen, we'll be able to see what's going on. And against each one of these services, you'll see that I'm setting a, a whole bunch of parameters in there. You'll see some of those change, some of them not, if I've selected the same thing. But we'll also see a quick look at the input of what is happening in that server and in that service, that capture service that's running. I can run common settings. I can configure each one of those engines. So if I look at my engine, configuration, just to give you an example of what we can do, you can see that I can change from PAL SD in this case to 1080i, or even if we really wanted to go right down to UHD settings. This is for capturing live input, remember. So this engine needs to be able to see live input. I can also therefore attach it to multiple boards. We recommend using either AJA video boards like Magic Decklink video boards, DVS boards, or DeltaCast video boards as input-output devices to your computer. So that would be how we would get your live feeds into these engines. Apart from that, we can also obviously attach to UDP, RTP transport streams. So you have the option of ingesting from multiple inputs in multiple formats. If I'm using RTP, which I am in this case, I can then either copy and paste an RTP URL into there, or if I was connecting to uh, the Arja or DVS or DeltaCast or Blackmagic boards, I could then pull up their configuration. All of this you'll be able to find further details about on Synergy Open, where we publish all of the manuals, all of the install documents, all of the useful things to allow you to configure these engines as you wish them to be. So that, that's a quick look at the back end, if you like, the engine that's running. What I'm now going to look at is Synergy Capture Control, the user GUI that most operators will come into contact with. The engine configurator is far more engineering based and back end based. This is more what your operator will be able to see. It's all an exact replica of what we saw in the engine manager itself. So I can close these down. I can tell that they're all valid. I can add more servers from in here, but I'd go back to creating those in the engine manager. But also I get a much bigger view of what's happening. I'm getting a smooth scrolling uh, image here between the two. If I switch between them, you'll see that my focus goes to other areas depending on wh which engine I choose to look at. I can put more and more engines in there so I can control multiple engines on multiple servers. You're limited only by your hardware at this point. Software-wise, we can add in as many licenses as you wish. We can make those icons smaller or larger depending on how many of these engines your operator is going to be able to control or wishes to control. So having said that we can select the items we want to view in full screen here. We get a little thumbnail down there. I can also then control what is happening on each part of that engine. So over on the right hand side we have the multiple layers that allow you to control the capture engine itself. 
as you can see down here, I'm running a standalone version. So this is just recording to a network area, and this could be recording to any storage you wish to. It could be completely out in the field, sitting on a laptop, recording to a removable drive. It's, it's that flexible. Um, we also then can select uh, templates, so I can create a new template. So I could have a whole set of templates which fill out the basic metadata that you want to record when you run a capture session. So those can all be in there. We can edit that and create those. It also tells me a lot about what's happening up here. The crucial bit, though, is the stop start recording bit. So at the moment, nothing is happening. I'm viewing all of the inputs to the engines, but the engines themselves are just pass throughs. There's no actual action happening until I hit this record button. And for the eagle eye amongst you, you'll see there are two record buttons. There's a record button in my capture panel there. And there's also a record button just below it that says G record. G record stands for gang recording. G stop stands for gang stop. So we can gang record multiple engines together if we wanted to. So in a studio environment or really in a reality show environment where you want to start all of your cameras recording or all of your feeds recording at the same time, then that feature is a really useful one. We just build these and literally by adding to the engines, we create a group. So you can see here I have a camera one and two group. I have a live engines one and two group, which nothing added to it, but I can add engines to that group by just literally clicking on this little plus sign and build up a whole set of the engines I want to start. So now if I hit gang record, those three engines would all drop into record at the same time. I'm not going to do that for this demonstration, but I'm just literally going to hit record on the first engine that I had focus on. And the minute I hit record, I get a nice little salmon picture here and a red dot recording in my element that shows me how much I'm recording, how long I've been recording for, the recording time of day, and all the information as an operator I need to know that that is recording. I can switch away from that service and the minute I switch away from it I now get a nice red block over where my recording item is so I know that that is still recording and when I go back to there I know to treat it very gently. I could also, in this case, split my recording if I wanted to in standalone. So if I was standing alone, recording just to a hard disk, it would make a complete file when I hit that split item so that I knew I have a complete file that I can use elsewhere straight away. I don't need to wait for my whole recording. It will carry on recording, but will have completed the first part of that file for me. I'm going to press stop on there just so you can see what happens when I press stop. And actually, we should have found that we've got in there a recording. Now, I can go off and check that that's the case by popping into here and looking at my videos, capture videos, and my latest video should be that one. And if I pull that up in my Synergy player, Join you can see that there office. we go. I had actually made a recording of what was on air at the time. I can scrub up and down that recording using my little player app here but that could be used in any media viewer at all. But that file is just sitting on my ordinary um, storage. It's not gone into my archive at all. It's just sitting there waiting to be manipulated later on. One of the other major features about Synergy Capture is the scheduler panel down the bottom here. And I, here I can schedule things to record just like a timer recorder at home. So I can add events. I can literally type in dates, times, and put whatever it is I want to do. You can see here that I've set a, a recording for half past six this evening. So I don't even need to be present to make a recording. That will automatically go off using a template I've already decided on from up here. And all of the relevant information is in there. So operationally, you can see it's very visual. You can see it's also very controllable. And one operator can control multiple inputs into the capture engine itself. So that's a very quick look at the Capture Configurator and the Capture Control Client. One of the other things you will find very useful as a technical manager in a large studio environment is the ability to start the recordings and stop the recordings remotely on a tablet or a remote PC by the web. So over here we've got a web page, which I'm going to call up. I'm literally going to call up my favorite because I've saved it in favorites, but there's a very simple little protocol you have to put in. 
to allow you to get to here and you'll see that my capture engines are sitting there waiting to be recorded so I can hit record remotely over the web and stop my recording that will probably argue with me that, that recording was too short but you can see that I can do exactly the same things again running those on a tablet away from the fixed environment so as long as I have a Wi-Fi connection to my uh, VPN or my network then I can actually get onto there and record things. So that was the Synergy web client. We've also looked at the desktop client itself and the com engine configurator. Do join us again for more in this series of Synergy introductory videos about the Synergy applications available.